Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. Yes, I know it's another gap game and that's not exactly what you wanted, but it is another entry in the Strategic Facepalm series. I haven't done one of these in a while and I think I picked up a pretty funny game to do one of these casts with. And I honestly cannot remember who sent me this one. I did not have a name attached to it, so I'm so sorry to whoever does not get credit for sending me this replay, but thank you because I got a good laugh out of it when I was previewing it and I think you guys will as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in here. Uh, wait, one more thing. I'm going to slow this down and tiny little uh, break here. I've been having some people complain about uh, audio synchronization and I'm trying to determine what exactly the problem is and I know it's on YouTube's end and I think it may have something to do with the specific web browser you're using. So I'm going to display on the screen one, two, three. I'm going to do this somewhere in the middle of the cast and at the end of the cast and if it desyncs more than about half a second, there's going to be a comment down below right at the top that says, does it desync? If it does desync, thumbs up. If it does not desync, uh, don't worry about it. And then post in the reply to that comment what web browser you're using and if it fixed it or not if you refreshed the page. Because most people, when you refresh the page, it syncs back up. Okay, end of rabbit trail. I'm going to bump this back up here and we will see where this game takes us. So, introductions on the right-hand side. We have Master Pain taking Aeon. Excellent name for the slug match to come. And then we have Tatsu, who is Cybran, followed by Solar Storm, a UEF player. And then WSL taking Seraphim. So we have all four factions represented on the right-hand side. On the left, we have... Oh my. Torzon Gombok. Or something. <laughs> taking Siren. And then we have Harwa taking Seraphim, a UEF choice for Fire Dragon, a noble name. And Excite taking Aeon. So once again, all four factions represented. So this is a four on four with a totally even distribution. Let's go ahead and... Uh, you know what? I'm not going to bump up the speed. I'm going to take this at a zero. We're going to take a casual stroll through this fail, not miss a thing, and hopefully get a laugh out of it. So, for everyone who plays Gap, and instruction for those of you who don't dare touch the noobness that is Gap of Rohan, the standard practice is to rush into the center and grab all of the mass you can because there is a huge destruction party in the center here that left behind a lot of tasty party goods. So, we have four ACUs moving in at this exact moment along with an engineer from Red. I don't think I've ever actually seen that before. He's going to try to snag some of this reclaim right here at the back with that engineer. Maybe he will get his hands on a little bit of extra mass. It is every little bit that counts, so anything that you can get is a good thing. And strangely enough, we've actually got four players staying back. I don't think I've seen this happen before either. We've got the outside corners all staying back from the mayhem to come in the center so acus have engaged we've got reclaim going on in vast quantities as these guys are trying to feed their teammates as well as themselves get those early mass extractor upgrades online and hopefully not die that is the key here you don't want to ever get caught up in a two-on-one gun commander situation uh, well, of course, there's no gun upgrades this early in the game, but they will definitely be around at some point. Solar Storm, kind of walking to the opposite side of the gap from where he should be, trying to snag this last little bit of mass way over here. And uh, there's actually a rock up here. You can walk to the edge and reclaim this rock. It has a nice little chunk of mass in it. And Fire Dragon's having second thoughts about going over for that rock. Tetsu... And Harwa are going to trade blows, though, and that is going to be reclaimed. So we've got two players, one from each side, that are getting a little low on health. Nice little push through the gap up here. We have some flares headed across to hopefully wreak some havoc on those outlying mexes before anybody can get to it. Ping's going down, letting people know that, hey, you might want to back up just a little bit. I'm seeing three yellows here. We've got five, seven, and six. Fire Dragon going after that rock that I was mentioning before. 
Solar Storm sitting on a comfortable 900 health, but going down under combined shots quite rapidly. So, this has got to disengage at some point, or we're going to have four AC Unics. And Bombers! b b b b bomb That is... Nope, no drop. That was disappointing. Ever so much so. Fire Dragon taking fire uh -huh, uh -huh, from two ACUs here. This is not good at all. We've got 2k health left on that. Bombers killing off these engineers in droves. Oh my word. The destruction is terrible. Fire Dragon is going to nuke here in just a second. Down and there he goes. A couple of shots being exchanged. Solar Storm is at 13. What do we got? What do we got? He is going to go... Oh no. 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 And he's down below the minimum health required. Three ACU nukes in the middle. No. But it's all four of the center players. We still have all four corners that are going to stay intact. Got some good bomber harassment going on still from WSL. That was a very nice little overcharge that ate up that little 400 health chunk of ACU that put him under the threshold to survive the ACU nuke. So as the smoke clears in the center, we can examine this ghastly black crater that is all that remains in Monument of the four guns that went down. Looks like these guys are going to have some expanding to do. It is nice and symmetrical, though, because both of these guys are going to get two bases. So we're going to have basically double eco wars. Might as well have started it on 2x resources and just done away with all of the crap that went down in the middle. Because you know what? It ended up doing absolutely no good at all for anyone involved because everyone died. T1 Bomber coming across the mountain here. There is a drove of engineers that need to get hammered by that bomber. I would love to see a quintuple kill, but I don't think I will because this thing is carrying on northward and is going to get pegged by this lonely interceptor here. Nope. His brothers came along as well. We've got four interceptors tagging that thing out. Bomber was not meant to be. And a radar over here. Why is... What? What? Why is there a radar all the way down here, built by the guy that's all the way up here? How, how, how does... why? That is very strange. Is that a... that's a Seraphim radar. He gave away his radar. He must have been power stalling. That must be what it was. Okay, so. Let's bump up the speed here. I think we can stand to do that now. We have one lonely b, -b bomber headed across... And uh, he is actually not headed too terribly far across. He's immediately going to get shot down by the same four interceptors. This is the protective squad that holds the ranks at the mountains. And not much else going on at the moment. Red is answering with a pretty good amount of air of his own. He's finally going to deal with these interceptors. I think maybe no. Oh, fail micro. And I think... That Excite is going to be fine. Master Pain pulling in 77 mass per tick. Now, some of that is probably reclaimed from this base down here. But, hey, 77 mass per tick is 77 mass per tick. And you could do a lot with that. Hopefully, he's going to put it to good use and not uh, uh, T2 power. We got more air factories going down. And, yes, he's probably going to do just fine. One thing that I do see is the left side. Ah, 82 mass per tick. That is definitely higher. Uh, the left-hand side is filling in their slots much more quickly than the right side is. Which is kind of uh, disconcerting because we have a 1500 player on the right. You would think that he would do things more quickly. But apparently that assumption would be wrong. All right, I want to see the next engagement. Where is it? We've got a lot of T1 spam here in the middle for red. Master Pain looks like he is headed southward. Probably, yes, got the T2 sweet on his ACU. He's going to head down there and build a fire base because what is a gap of Rohan game without a good fire base? Actually, the more accurate statement would be, what is Gap of Rohan without T2 stationary artillery? I don't know where that all started from, but it seems like I've never played a game of Gap of Rohan where there was not at least one, two, one T2 artillery installation. 
Got some bombers building up on the right hand side here. That is a T2 factory upgrade. Maybe we'll see some Nafas. Or a T2 transport. I would love to see a Com drop. Com drop would be amazing. But I don't think that WSL does Com drops. I don't think I've ever seen him do a Com drop. Maybe he has. Maybe he hasn't. It's been a while since I played with this guy. He's pretty cool though. He's he is a pretty good player for 1500. All right, check in. One, two, three. Game time is 10:38. And everyone is rushing down to comment on whether or not the audio is in sync with the game. <laughs> it is only a 10 minute long game. Or it's only 10 minutes at this point. So I don't think it would be too far out of sync. But if it's half a second out of sync or more, I think that would be a pretty good indicator. Yup, there's the Oblivion turrets going down. We've got a shield coming. It is in the works on the rock overlooking the pass. This is actually a decently good place to build a firebase if you're going to build one at all because you do not get uh, the runaround problems with this rock and anything that tries to run around this rock will come into range your T2 point defense in pretty good time. So, yeah, not the worst thing in the world. I would build it either up here or like way back here because trying to build it up close, it, it the line of sight is not good with all of that crap in the center. All right, I was right. We have Nothas coming up. Seraphim units look so strange. It looks kind of like uh, googly eyes with some kind of face. Not entirely sure. You can see the uh, third little round thing there is a mouth. He's like, oh, but maybe not. All right, zooming out here so we don't miss anything. Not that there's anything going on. It is Gap of Rohan, after all. You have to turtle up at some point. Ah, Corsairs. We have Corsairs, and we have Nothas. This started as a mirror image with four ACU deaths, and it looks like we're going to have a mirror image again, because everyone is going for T2 bomber snipes. Although I think the Corsair is going to be far more effective than the Nothas are, because Nothas suck at, T at sniping ACUs, because they are so easy to dodge. But we do have Interceptor cover coming in, so the Nothas are going to stay alive for a good long time. Uh, ooh, Swift Winds. Maybe not. And we also have T1 Bombers. Excite trying to throw up a shield with all his might. Is he going to get it up? Maybe. Yes, he is. There's the shield. Now throwing down a flak. He's going to try to kill off all this air, but the shield is going down rather rapidly. All he has to do, honestly, is just back up somewhere where he won't get his feet tangled and dodge around in circles. And he is not. 1400 health, 100 health, and shield! Build another shield! Another shield! Not, not anti-air, you have to get another shield up, you're almost out of health! Oh my word! It is so close! Corsairs up here now. There goes one. And there goes two. <laughs> Opposite corners. And we're still symmetrical. We have WSL versus Torzon Gombic. I'm just gonna do that because that is that sounds like a name that should be that should belong in a documentary about Aztec warriors. That is what he is. The Siren faction fits him well. All right, we have continuing production of Corsairs. One thing that I do see that is going to be a major problem in the very near future is that uh, Purple has no anti-air and also has no interceptors. And Corsairs suck at killing other air units. I mean terribly. So we're about to see bad things happen, I think, for Purple. Orange... Also not in the best situation. He has no anti-air around his ACU, and his ACU is completely tangled in engineers. He cannot dodge. So if these Corsairs come str- Oh, no. Nope. Nope. He's gonna engage. He's gonna try to kill the Nothas. No! And... Kaboom! Purple goes down. Totally could have killed him for a draw. Totally could have sent the Corsairs down, and we would have had all eight players die at 16 minutes. 
<sighs> but it was not meant to be. All right. That is the atrocity that is Gap of Rohan and basically how any game on Gap of Rohan goes down. It is a troll map for troll players and troll games happen on it. Hopefully you guys got a good laugh out of that one. I snickered quite substantially as I watched it for the first time. And to finish out this cast, one, two, three, comment below with your uh, observations on audio desync. I have a theory that Mozilla Firefox is the culprit because that is the one single thread that I've seen run through all of the complaints about audio desync. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap it up for me for this cast and this game. Hopefully I will be back in a day or two with an epic game. I have one on the shelf. I really need you guys replay. You guys replays. That is an odd plural form. Uh, because I do not have a whole lot of a backlog at the moment, so it would be extremely helpful to me if you could give me some good games to cast. And for anybody who submitted a replay and it didn't get casted, I am terribly sorry, but I have to make these things interesting, so a lot of times there's games with like 20 minute dead zones, where there's cool stuff that happens at the beginning and at the end, or somewhere in the middle, but the, the, the rest of the replay just isn't worth it, so... I may do a compilation cut at some point of some epic fails that happen in casts that people send me. And without any further ado, I am out of here. I will see you guys in the next cast. Thanks so much for watching.